how law enforcement is using Google to identify and arrest suspected criminals. Authorities say they solved an arson at a central Florida home by finding out who had used Google to look up the victim's home address. And as News 6 investigator Mike DeForest explains, this criminal case has a connection to the singer R. Kelly. At 17, I thought this is what love was. I thought this is what it was being with a celebrity, you know. There's Asriel Clary is very outspoken on YouTube about the abuse she says she suffered at the hands of her ex-boyfriend, singer R. Kelly, who has pleaded not guilty to numerous sex crimes charges. This past summer, while Clary was living in this Polk County home, someone poured an accelerant like gasoline around the house and then lit the family's car on fire. We had a big phone. The car is getting ready to blow up. Clary posted video of the car fire on her Instagram page, saying it was premeditated with the intent to harm her. The alleged victim and her family no longer live here. They moved out after that car fire. The house is for sale right now. But if you look down here on the driveway, you can see scorch marks where that fire occurred. Now, at first, authorities had no idea who might be responsible, but they did have an idea. Perhaps the person who lit this fire used Google on their phone to search the address of this home. Court records show a warrant was issued to Google headquarters seeking users who had conducted a search of the address close in time to the arson. Authorities soon discovered a phone belonging to Michael Williams was used to search Google for that address three times on the night of the fire. Williams happens to be an associate of R. Kelly. This is one of the first uh, warrants of its kind. Attorney Todd Spodek represents Williams, who is now charged with arson and witness intimidation. They plan to challenge law enforcement's use of an Internet keyword search, believing it's unconstitutional. And the problem with these keyword search warrants is they're incredibly overbroad. Essentially, what they're saying is we need evidence of anyone who searched for a particular sequence of words at a set time. In a statement, a Google representative says, we vigorously protect the privacy of our users while supporting the important work of law enforcement. We require a warrant and push to narrow the scope of these particular demands when overly broad. But Spodek worries that anyone who uses Google could now get swept up in a criminal investigation. So you could wind up putting yourself in a very problematic situation merely because you searched for some keywords in the privacy of your own home or on your mobile phone. Authorities say they do have other evidence implicating Williams in the arson, including records that reportedly show his cell phone pinging off towers near the crime scene. But court records suggest that law enforcement did not know to even look for that other evidence until they identified Williams using those Google keyword those searches. Those that have been paying attention, I've already set you up for where I'm going with my commentary on this video. From the beginning, I told you what I saw coming out of these fan pages, these Facebook groups, etc. So it was no surprise to me to see some of these people coming to YouTube with some of their narratives. It's quite interesting to me that as I continue to watch, the people who knew what I was talking about, they would get offended and go to certain bloggers and try to put their spin on what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, I stand by everything I've said. And I'm telling you, from the beginning, I have said something ain't right. Somebody, some people still within R. Kelly's circle are up to no good. And then when I got a contact from Cash Jones and she solidified my beliefs, I found it puzzling why every time I would say something to just let you know that whether you believe what she was saying or not, pay attention to what she's saying because she's telling you in so many words what I'm telling you that something has not been right and people came on these public platforms doing suspect things. So when I see people defending them and going out of their way to get a reaction out of me simply because I see what's going on, it told me a lot. Now, as I said in the past, I respected those individuals who were doing the interviews and all that, but at the end of the day, I think a lot of that 
put us where we are today when it comes to a lot of the things that we saw recently added to the superseding indictments against R. Kelly. Now, as I said, I peeped a whole lot last year, and I didn't speak on a lot of it. The few chats that I did appear in and I made myself known, people would ask me, was I going to make sense of what was going on? I was watching, but for the most part, most of what I was observing had nothing to do with R. Kelly. So then when we had people coming to my channel, subscribe to other platforms, questioning me about things that they're blogging about, and then taking offense when I, in so many words, tell them I'm not focused on none of that bullshit, I saw what was going on. People jumping from platform to platform with these certain narratives. At the same time, some of these individuals claim to have these exclusives with people inside R. Kelly's camp. Mind you, I never invited anyone to my personal page. So let's go to the time when Cash was on all these lives, giving interviews. And when I would tell people to tune in to the lives and post it on my personal page, as I've said from the beginning, everything I post is on my personal page. I don't hide in these groups. So when I would see people from YouTube jumping on my personal page, and then when I post something about Cash Jones, for example, jump in these groups and start saying things like, don't trust her and undermining what I'm clearly telling you that even if you don't trust her, she's telling you something that would benefit what's going on. So when I saw people going out their way to do things like that, I side-eyed everybody. It's funny the individuals that took offense, though. So let's recap for those that were so involved and may have missed where I'm going. So let's go back to Cash. If you did a little basic research on her, you would know that she is a journalist. She reports on news. She has been affiliated with Hip Hop Weekly and Baller Alert, among other magazines and media outlets. So when I would ask things like, I don't understand why people are coming to smaller YouTube channels when they have all this access to people with bigger reach, it blew my mind. You had people who are related to R. Kelly who clearly work in broadcasting facilities, so it made no sense to me. Meanwhile, you had all these people pulling out all these distractions. Let's think about what Cash told us. She told us out of her mouth that Michael Williams did not know R. Kelly. Yet, what do we see? I wanted to see how the news would spotlight this particular arrest based on what we were already told and as I suspected they of course made it seem like R. Kelly was associated with this guy but the more I began to observe the way people were moving online it became clear to me and why I tried to explain to some people how this RICO works you see R. Kelly didn't have to directly know certain individuals. Certain individuals could know people that are affiliated with R. Kelly. Hence, there goes the conspiracy. So that would be up to the government to prove R. Kelly had affiliation with those people, right? So my problem with a lot that was going on last year was these people entertaining the shenanigans at the same time perpetuating a lot of the things they're accusing R. Kelly of. So when I speak on these things and people just act like I'm trying to be in the midst of shit or they're not seeing exactly what I'm saying, I said, fuck it. I'm going to just stick to what I'm doing. I don't have to big up any specific bloggers or do any of the nature because at that particular point, I didn't trust anybody and still don't for this very reason. So let's recap on how I think the prosecutors are building this RICO case against R. Kelly. 
Because while I've listened to all these people for months and months talk about the fact that R. Kelly is being held without bond and how unfair it is, and comparing his case to other cases, but neglecting the fact that people are doing certain things and putting certain things in motions that make R. Kelly's case different from the ones they're comparing it to, considering the prosecutors are linking other individuals who are, I believe, acting on their own recognizances to R. Kelly. Such as, let's go back to Cash Jones. Now, if you recall, Tim Savage brought her in the mix by telling Lifetime she was R. Kelly's publicist. And if you looked at the indictment, you would notice that they brought her into the indictment by also referring to her as R. Kelly's publicist, which we know is a lie. We know that Surviving R. Kelly got its push off of the book. However, at that time, Tim Savage didn't know who really wrote the book. So he tried to bring in these other individuals to claim this book. Then when all of their plans start to come out on social media, of course, they had to come up with a backup plan. But let's keep reminding ourselves how all these people are connected and the things Cash Jones told us. Be sure to go back and reflect on that, as I don't want to be repetitive. But as Tim Savage was bringing forth all these people who could solidify his claims against R. Kelly, other people were doing things behind the scenes. If you ask me, it was so many different people trying to make a name off of R. Kelly. People within his camp people who had this great infatuation with him, and of course, the people who had the most to gain, the record labels. So when I first noticed Cash Jones coming out and why I told you all to pay attention to what's going on, I noticed that when she was putting certain individuals on blast, people were targeting her on the media. I'm sorry, on social media. So as I'm communicating with her and she's telling me who she thinks is behind a lot of this stuff, that's when I got a lot of my information and how she came into the mix. Just like many of these other girls, they found an opportunity in a way to get into R. Kelly's camp. Now, does that necessarily mean they were involved with R. Kelly? No. But contrary to the narrative that these people are painting that R. Kelly is the predator, this again serves another example of how women sought R. Kelly out, infiltrated their way into his camp to get next to him. Now, according to Cash, she saw Julius Darrington online and that's how she got in. From there, in being with R. Kelly's camp, she made her way over to the Savages. And that's where we have all this stuff in motion today. Now, as I've mentioned before, I feel like prosecutors have been intentionally doing things to build their case. So when we saw Cash come out and bring out the person that she felt was doing a lot of questionable things, we saw a lot of shady other people being affiliated to this man. So how can they connect R. Kelly to this Michael Williams who Cash has already told us he doesn't know? Well, he may not know R. Kelly, but he knows Cash. Cash knows R. Kelly through Julius. Cash also knows about everything that's been going on with this situation in dealing with the Savages and the Clarys, considering that she wrote the book they got everybody so hyped, she served a major point in this whole thing. So in conclusion, if you ask me my opinion and how R. Kelly is being affiliated to this Michael Williams character, it's through relations through people within R. Kelly's camp or people who were affiliated within R. Kelly's camp. That's what is going to make this conspiracy and why I felt like, honestly, 
the sexual abuse charges, they're, they're not going to get too far. The thing that they're banking on is this RICO. And we have seen these people doing all these questionable things online to solidify this case. Stay tuned and make sure you're on my Patreon for the extended version of this video where I will be breaking down the indictment and giving you more insight to how these individuals and the things that they were doing contributed into the indictment against R. Kelly.